addition to it, um, following Dr. Mulcahy's recommendations. So uh, I recognise it's quite a long one, but members of the public probably won't have it in front of them, so apologies, I'll, I'll read the whole motion. Yes, This council notes that the public, con the public consultation on urgent care, which we're all CCG launched on the 20th of September, council is totally opposed to any outcome which would see the closure of existing walk-in facilities and minor injury and illness facilities at current urgent care locations in Wirral. Council believes that any new model of urgent care should enhance existing facilities rather than result in closures or reductions of service. Council supports the objectives of enhancing patient safety, improving patient outcomes, making services more accessible, and relieving pressure on accident and emergency departments, <coughs> but not the introduction of any private healthcare provider or any of their shell companies to provide any type of service within Wirral, including walk-in provision. Council encourages residents to have their say on the model proposed by the CCG and welcomes the CCG's offer to attend relevant council scrutiny committees during the consultation period to allow detailed scrutiny of the proposal by members. Any funding bids need to be scrutinised within the scrutiny process. Council also notes that on page 75 of the Case of Change document that a capital funding bid has commenced for an urgent treatment centre. Council rejects this approach as it undermines the consultation process and believes it would have been better to have waited until the consultation is finished and the results known. This council is opposed to all forms of privatisation in the NHS and totally opposes the introduction of any privateers into our local health service, be they based in UK, America or domiciled elsewhere. This council is opposed to NHS staff being transferred by the private sector and will work to ensure that all NHS workers are employed by the NHS with their wages and conditions negotiated through collective bargaining with their employer, the NHS and the trade unions. No contract should be signed with the CCG that leads to private, non-NHS organisations running NHS services or leads to a reduction in services at each current location. Council believes that all healthcare should be free at point of need and all services should be delivered and administered by the NHS. And in addition, we request that the CCG cease the existing consultation process. We request that the CCG come back to clinicians and patient groups to discuss meaningful and open proposals to retain the existing community-based services and improve the services, not at the cost of them being subsumed into a new urgent treatment centre at Arab Park Hospital. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cross. Do we have a second? Motion. 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 Sorry. Right, excuse me, Chair. Earlier on, you did mention, well, I swear, you did mention that you were going to call me to speak. Did I call me to speak? Sorry, did. I thought yes. I had it actually crossed you off the list, Councillor, would you like to speak? Well, no. What's been put forward with the additional point was, what for the additional point, was voted upon unanimous from drummer, and it's unanimously by Council on the night. What I'm trying to sorry. Well, I'll yeah. probably yeah. defer it was. I believe it was. What I'm trying to establish is what we've learned tonight and whether the situation is changing to some extent. Uh, one of the things that troubled me appears to be being answered, but pulling a new figure out of not out of the hat, I appreciate by negotiation and work to produce a new figure of 1440 seems to me to change some of the worries we had. I've tried to listen to what's been said. I'll just wait while the chair takes advice. Okay. I've tried to listen to what's been said this evening. I've reached some conclusions. No guarantee that those conclusions are accepted by members. Um, I'm just going to deal with the UTC staff off with. There appears to be some understanding, appreciation, even amongst the views we've had tonight, that that is a worthwhile project. Uh, having attended a and &E this last weekend, and during the afternoon, I'm fortunate to see some things in action, which I haven't been there to see some things in action, but I was. Um, so, on the issue of the UTC, I'd say that having considered the advice and information offered by the CCG, this committee understands the organisational and medical reasons for the location of the UTC at Arab Park. That's my first thought. 
I want to cover some of the things we looked at this evening, and I tried to take them in turn. I'm going to talk about the succession of services, as I call it. Based on the information and planning outline to date, uh, I remain unconvinced that the cessation of services at VCH Mall, Miriam, Parkfield, and Eastern sites can properly be replaced by the currently suggested additional number of GPs and nurse appointments at the surgeries. We cover the issue of children. Uh, I also consider that as the locations of replacement services for children remain unknown, the committee cannot yet be assured that the replacement services are as good as or better than the present arrangements. Um, I want to deal with the money. The committee, we received some assurances that the, the additional funding of 1.8 million is being planned to provide more appointments in the localities. But we remain concerned that the potential patients should actually be able to get through the system to secure them. And that deals with the issue of telephones. Councillor Usher dealt with that very well. The other issue that's causing confusion, I think, is that confusion is likely to arise at locations that might be developed to serve the North and Latin age groups if services are not readily available at convenient locations for other age groups and neighbourhood services are not, in new, not yet in place. Is that because we've heard from Vapel about the vision that we need to get through the ideas to the pieces in place. And finally, because we seem to be in a period of consultation still, I would like the CCG to come back. I'd request that the CCG provide updated information for members as their detailed work progresses with the aim of addressing the concerns outlined. Now, I've written my conclusions, I have to move if somebody wants, but the, uh, uh, as I'll be the second one, the issue is that we've moved on from council. Council has stated the view we're in the process of consultation. We can reiterate council's view by all means, but I think we should address some of the issues that have been put to us tonight. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you for that, Councillor Gilchrist. I'm going to bring um, Graham Hodgkinson in. Um, Chair, point of order. There's a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Can we move to the vote? I am going to let Graham speak first and then you'll move to the bench. Um, I, I was um, attempting to give some advice to Chair and I felt it was important to give that advice to the whole scrutiny committee at the same time. The role tonight is the scrutiny committee to assure itself around the consultation process. The uh, scrutiny committee is a non political place. Um, we have to be absolutely clear that the any resolution is in relation to the consultation process and in response to the consultation process, which is live. Scrutiny will see, obviously, clear proposals at the end of the consultation process, and at that time, we'll have views about those proposals as they've emerged. But I think scrutiny is on very dangerous ground if it's taking a, a role in responding to a consultation process which is underway and is not complete. Um, so, to my advice would be that any Resolution needs to be a resolution in relation to the consultation, the strength and depth of the consultation. If scrutiny at some point feels like it is not, that the, scrutiny, the consultation is inadequate, then a referral to the Secretary of State is within the, the um, powers of scrutiny at that stage. But clearly, the consultation process needs to be organised in the way at this point in time. Thank you, Brent. Councillor Mills Prance. Thank you. Were you looking to speak? No. Oh, okay. We're just chattering. Can I suggest, I know that we've taken the motion and I know that we've had a, a second, nominee, second nomination. As chair, I would like to take some legal advice before we move on um, and uh, move the motion. So if we can have a five minute break, we need to do that. Thank you. 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 Thank you.